I've got a word for somebody in this house and I want to preach for the next three and a half hours on the subject matter, a room that changed everything. A room that changed everything. Say it with me. A room that changed everything. A room that changed everything. A room that changed everything. Elijah in 1 Kings had a room that when he shut the door with a woman with a pot of oil to bake him a cake and eat her last meal and die, the presence of God came in that room and it changed everything. Elisha in 2 Kings walks into a room, shuts the door, a woman about to have to, after losing her husband, about to have to sell her sons off into slavery, shuts the door, the presence of God comes in the room and it changes everything. Anybody ever been in a room and the presence of God come in that room and when the presence of God comes in the room, it changed everything. There was a man by the name of Lazarus who had been dead for three days. Mary and Martha were mourning his death. Come on, I speak right now to JoJo's body and I command brain activity and I command her body to function. Oh, come on, I need somebody that knows uh, to come in agreement with me right now. If you don't know, that's Bishop Kevin Wallace's worship leader who had, had an emergency C-section and when she did, she went into cardiac arrest uh, and the doctors has given the husband three days from Friday to, to Monday. He's given them three days to make a decision what to do next. How many of God people in this room would believe God? How many of God's people would believe that he can do anything? They believe he can go in a hospital room. They were mourning the death of Lazarus in John 11. They were mourning the death of Lazarus. That ain't my time. That must be your time up. John, they were mourning the death of Lazarus. Jesus walks in the room. He Shuts the door. Have you noticed that all three things I've spoke about so far, every one of them shut the door? You know why they all had to shut the door? Because as long as you allow negativity in the room, they will talk you out of a miracle. Those that are logical thinkers, they'll talk you out of a miracle. Those who are, well, I just like to plan for the future and have a backup plan, they'll talk you out of a miracle. I've been here 17 years. Every time we have anything outside, all week long, there's always a chance of rain. And for 17 years, people that's been with me for 17 years, uh, every single time, I don't know when you're going to learn, uh, but sometime hopefully you do, will text me all week, Bishop, what is our backup plan? And I'll hang up. Because I don't need any doubt in my life. On Monday, I started thanking God for beautiful weather. And look what the Lord has done. Sometimes you need to shut the door. Sometimes you got to shut the door on your mama. Wasn't nobody, wasn't nobody, loved, wasn't nobody loved Lazarus more than Mary and Martha. Wasn't nobody love love. Lazarus more than Mary and Martha, but Jesus had to get them all out. You better not allow people in the room that don't believe. Remember a moment ago I said, who in here believes God can do anything? And everybody, 500 people raised their hand. I believe God can do anything. But do you? Do you still believe blinded eyes can open? Mark chapter 5, Jairus' daughter is dead. I'm talking about a room, Emma, that changes everything. God's going to put it together better than you could have put it together or planned it for yourself. Matter of fact, if you'll take your hands off of it, God says he'll make it easy for you. 
John. Mark, the fifth chapter, Jairus had sent word to Jesus. He said, I don't even need Jesus to come. I just need him to send his word. How many of you got a word God's going to do something and you don't believe it? God's done promised you your prodigal and you're staying up walking the floors all night. I said, God can do anything. Mark the fifth chapter, Jairus' daughter was dead. Jairus' daughter was dead. Jesus comes to the house. He's late, of course. So I don't know where we got singing, he's an old time God. <laughs> where you at, TC? He's on time. He's on time. <laughs> Mark the fifth chapter, he's late. Lazarus, <laughs> Lazarus was dead three days, four, late, because he shows against all odds. When everybody's counted it out and everybody's counted it done, and when everybody said, oh, Lazarus, he's already starting to stink by the culture of the day on the fourth day, they've already begun to stink. And he, he, he defeats all odds. I want to tell somebody this morning, he's about to defeat all odds. Uh, they counted you out. The doctor counted you out. The banker counted you out. Your mama counted you out. Your neighbor counted you out. He's about to show them uh, with God all things are possible. Jairus' daughter was dead. She was 12 years old. She was 12 years old. Jesus, Mike, walks in the house. Uh, Derek, he kicks everybody out of the house. I like that, Jesus. Uh, he kicks everybody out the house. He shuts the door. He walks to the bed because in the presence of Jesus, everything in the room changes. Anybody in agreement? Every room that Jesus walked in from the Old Testament. Hey, prophet, so good to see you. Thank God you're with us this morning. The blessings of resources is coming into your hands. I see it coming on every side of you. I see you doing like this. Resource, 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 resource. Oh, thank you, thank you. You just better get a thank you on your lips uh, and don't say how, don't say why, just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Resources is coming into your hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not prophesying to her, I'm prophesying through her. Anybody believe in God for some resources? Uh, you ought to make a little noise right there. Jairus' daughter was dead, Lazarus was dead, Elisha, Elisha, all these different stories. Uh, the one thing that I noticed that when Jesus walked in the room, everything that in that current moment changed. Jesus still changes everything. Jesus still changes everything. But in Acts the second chapter, elder, where Jesus came and changed everything, he flips the script. Instead of Jesus walking in the room and changing everything, he says, there's one coming after me that is mightier than I, that he will empower you and greater things will you do than even I did. He went to from coming and just meeting the needs to walking into Acts chapter 2 and empowering us to change a situation. You missed it. You missed it. See, some of you get excited about the Jesus that changes everything for you. But there's others in this room that's more mature than that uh, and you get excited because Jesus has empowered you. Jesus has empowered you to walk in atmospheres and change them, uh, to walk in hospital rooms uh, and change them. Jesus uh, went from coming in and doing the miracle to empowering you to
to do the miracle and it's his greater thing I'm talking about a man who used to heal blinded eyes. He says, now, Pastor Ricky, I'm going to empower you to go and heal blinded eyes. A room that changed everything. The upper room was the work of the Holy Ghost, not so we can have good church, although we've had good church. came to empower you to take your rightful place in authority on the earth and here we have people that's been serving Jesus for 45 years and your testimony still is the devil's been beating me up all week long we have people that come to service, a prayer service a worship rehearsal, intercessory prayer, fast three days and still, your testimony is, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Then you got these jokers on the other side that say, well, I just don't want to be seen. I want to be humble. You're not humble. You're an introvert. I need somebody that understands that God came gave his only son who walked this earth to do mighty miracles and when he finished he said it is finished but there's one coming after me I need you to go to the upper room and wait but he's coming not so that you can have a church service he's coming so that you will be witnesses he's going to empower you to walk into the streets he's going to empower you to walk into the place of employment he's going to empower you young people to walk into your schools and when you walk in devils have to walk out when you walk in crooked paths get made straight the Holy Ghost didn't come so you can have goosebumps and sing send it on down he's already here I don't need him to send it down I just need to tap into I heard a preacher preach another night talking about you need to pray to the Holy Ghost comes down the Holy Ghost already came in Acts chapter 2 and he ain't gone nowhere. In Acts chapter 2, he came down uh, to empower the church. Uh, and let me deal with some of you religious people that feel like you need to pray for, uh, uh, I got to get in my mind and pray for a long time before the Holy Ghost uh, will empower me. Do you think the Holy Ghost gives you a gift, uh, takes it back, uh, gives you a gift, uh, takes it back, uh, gives you a gift, takes it back? No, when you got filled uh, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost you were filled a room that changed everything a room that changed everything tag team back again Before we go any further, I want you to look at your neighbor. Y'all hear the tone in my voice? I feel like preaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, today we move from that room to this room. That was the wrong neighbor. They didn't, they didn't feel anything. They didn't get a book. Find another neighbor. It's very important that you understand that today we move from that room to this room. I've learned that three times is a charm. So we got to say it together. Everybody stand on your feet real quick. Everybody get on your feet real quick and say, hey neighbor, today we transition from that room to this room. If you're ready to move, I dare you to give God praise right now. If you're ready to relocate, I dare you to give God glory right now. If you're ready to leave tomorrow, Y'all miss that. Ready to leave tomorrow so that you can make it to your future? I dare you to take 30 seconds right now and give God praise because I'm moving from that room to this room. I'm moving from sickness 
into healing. I'm moving from bondage into freedom. I'm moving from sadness into joy. If you're ready to move, I dare you to shake your neighbor and say, when I move, you move just like that. Tell somebody, I'm getting up out of here. I've been here long enough. I'm ready to move from that room to this room. Give God praise one more time. Tell somebody, I'm getting up out of here. I'm tired of looking at what I've been looking at. I'm moving from that room to this room. I'm tired of feeling what I've been feeling. I'm moving from that room to this room. Ask somebody beside you, are you ready to go? Well, then if you're ready to go, start praising with me. Because I'm moving from that room. This is my only time and my last time telling you this. You may be seated. The reason why we made it to Acts chapter 2 is because... After Jesus died, he commissioned his disciples to go to that room, the upper room. And when he told them something, that's why I love Jesus. He doesn't just say things broadly. He's very specific in his instructions. Can I tell somebody that this is the season? If you don't hear God's instruction specifically, it's probably not God, it's probably you. Because God will never have you walk into something without preparing you somewhat. So he didn't tell him to go to that room and that was it. He told him, mom, when you go to that room, I need for you to pray. And watch this, I want to submit to you, because we're moving quickly here, that the upper room was nothing more than a reflection of Gethsemane. And Gethsemane and the upper room, honestly, was nothing more than the crucifixion of Christ. What are you talking about, Pastor G? I'm trying to submit to you today that when God tells you to go pray, here's what he's telling you to do, to go die. And I want you to know the reason why we're moving from that room to this room is because for 17 years of this ministry, there has been prayers that has happened at this altar that we are now seeing come to pass. Y'all missed that. I'm going to say that again. For 17 years, there's been mom and dad and you praying at this altar, crying out to God, asking God to move in a mighty way. And while I was preparing for this moment, I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, Germain, I want you to tell them that they have made it to the season of manifestation. That everything that you've been praying for, if you give me praise, you are about to see it everything that you've been crying out for you better get ready you are about to see it everything you've been fasting for get ready you are about to see it everything you've been sowing for you better get ready you are about to see it I dare you to high five three people near you and tell them welcome to the season of manifestation welcome to the season that what you've been believing for, you are about to see it. What you've been asking for, you are about to see. I need somebody to praise God. Somebody shout at me, I made it. I should be here, but I made it. I should have threw in the towel, but I made it. I should have quit a long time ago. Touch three people and tell them I made it to the season of manifestation. I can't tell you, but I can. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. The upper room was nothing more than the place where a few people died. I want you to understand that death in our lives is not allowed except in the room of prayer. It is only 
in the room of prayer where God allows death. And I want to tell somebody that the moment that you die is the moment that God's will begins. Y'all way too quiet over here. I come to tell somebody, let me say it again. The moment that you are willing to put yourself on the cross of prayer is the moment that the will of God will be manifested in your life. I just want to talk to the people that's been in here praying. I want to talk to the people that's been talking to God. I come to tell you that you are dead. Now watch this. Because when you die, you give permission for resurrection power to leave that room and come into... Y'all too quiet. The moment that you die in prayer is the moment you give God permission to send the resurrection power. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room today, but I come to let you know that if you have died, get ready. You're about to get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. I'm moving from that room to this room. Hey, I'm moving. Hey, from that room. Hey, to this room. I'm moving. I feel the spirit of prophecy in here. Uh, Bishop Tucker, Pastor Rachel, stand up. We are about to see every prayer that's been prayed come to pass. Here's what I see in the spirit. And I'm getting ready to transition here. Here's what I see in the spirit. I see that the 17 years of prayer and seeking is about to be answered by God's hand. The revival that's been prayed for before y'all got here, we are about to see it come to pass. Listen to me, mothers, fathers has been believing for your loved ones. The prodigal son, the daughter, the mama, the daddy, the aunt, the cousin, watch this, even your enemy, you've been praying to get saved because they've been getting on your nerves. Listen to me, I'm not playing. I'm not joking at all. I want you to understand that they, as you move, they will move. A few of you got it. You got to catch it. That when you move today from that room of the upper room, they don't even have a choice. They're about to move to this room. I don't know who needed to hear that, but you better give God praise. Because today, sir, we're getting up out of here. And when we leave this, every person connect to me, they leaving it too. I come to tell somebody that on the day of Pentecost, there came a sound. I dare you to open up your mouth and release a sound. I said open up your mouth and release a sound. We are moving from the upper room to this day of Pentecost. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Because you know what happened. When Jesus died, oh man, you play like that, boy, you make me want to, <laughs> I want you to catch this. You see, when Jesus died, uh, when he said, Lord have mercy, it is finished. <laughs> Y'all talk to me since they ain't going to talk back. <laughs> when Jesus said, it is finished. 
It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. To our online family, I come to let you know it is finished. Whatever pain you've been dealing with, it is finished. Whatever pressure you've been under, it is finished. Whatever sickness you've been dealing with, it is finished. Whatever bondage you've been going through, it is finished. Whatever lack you've been experiencing, it is finished. Whatever thing you've been needing that's been holding you back, God told me to tell you it is finished and it's on the way. Y'all missed it. Your peace, your joy, your money, your family, your job, your business, it's on the way. I dare you to praise him because Jesus said it's finished and whatever you need is on. Take 30 seconds and lose your mind right now. It is finished and your miracle is on the way. Ah, somebody scream in this place. Watch this, watch this. I'm moving, I'm moving. When he said, it is finished, the Bible says, the Bible said that he hugged his head. He put his head down, and the first thing that the Bible says in Matthew 27, it said, and he gave up the ghost. Uh, look down at your feet. Come on, honey, you do it with me. Look down at your feet and say, uh, I give up. Look down at your feet again and say, I give up. Can I tell you what's happening in, in this room today? This is a room of surrender. Throw your hands up. Because when you throw your hands up, you say, I give up. I give up to my will. I give up to my ways. I give up the struggle. I give up the pain. I give up the insecurities. I give up the confusion. I give up the depression. I give up the oppression. I give up those demons. I give up alcohol. Who am I talking to? I give up marijuana. I give up sleeping pills. I give up oxycodone. I give up crack cocaine. I dare somebody to give God a praise because you're giving it up right now. And when you give it up, guess what? He now takes it in. I come to tell somebody, give God praise because he's about to take what you've been given. Y'all miss it. I said, give God a praise as he takes what you are giving up. Now, here's the good news about that. When you give it up and he takes it, I need some runners on this one. Guess what? It's never coming back. This Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to act like it with you or not. Y'all miss what I said over here. When you give it up, God takes it. Now you praise him because it's never coming back. I need 30 of you to lose your mind. Go ahead, prophet, it's wrong. It's never coming back. Depression is never. Confusion is never. Hey, it's never coming back. It's never coming back. He gave up the ghost. And the next thing, I don't want to mess it up. And the next thing that happened, after he gave up the ghost, man, I'm trembling. That's y'all's fault. Y'all pray something new on me. I feel something new on me. Whew. Watch this. After he gave up the ghost, the Bible says that the veil was torn. I get excited that the veil was torn. But it really makes me want to lose my mind because how the veil was torn. The veil wasn't torn from bottom to top. It was, it was torn from top to bottom. Here's the significance of that. Man could have cut it from bottom to top. But only God could have cut it from top to bottom. What are you telling me, Pastor G? I come to tell you that what you gave up, only God can cut this off. 
and it's never coming back. I dare somebody to give God praise that he tore the veil. Thank you, Bishop. And he gave you access. No, y'all missed it. You think you are experiencing God because of me and Bishop? No, you are experiencing God because he gave you access. I dare you to lose your mind for the next 30 seconds and praise him that you, that you have access. Go ahead, Mother Ron, you got access. You don't need nobody to go before God, you got access. You don't need nobody to pray for you no more, you got access. was torn and I like this one this gonna mess up all the introverts right here Bishop the Bible says that the earth what are you doing Pastor G we get it the earth begin to quake no you got it you're missing it you have access to quake the earth. Y'all better listen to what he said. You didn't realize God's no longer sending the shaking because God has empowered you to shake everything that's not like him. Y'all miss it. I'm going to say it again. God told me to tell you that in this season of manifestation, he's not shaking nothing because today you are about to receive power that allows you to shake everything. I dare somebody turn your feet loose real quick and start shaking everything that's not like God. Start shaking everything that don't belong to God. I said turn your feet loose. Get off your feet. Stay right there, Debbie. Don't turn that. Stay right there. Everybody take your feet. I know you're waiting for me to tell you. God said, I ain't telling you nothing. If you want to shake loose everything that's had you bound, do it. If you're tired of dealing with things for 20, 30 years, stand up and shake. If I told y'all what I've been through this week, uh-uh. Because see, this sometimes you got to learn how to praise them when Devin ain't here, when the drummer's not here, when Pastor Rachel and the team's not here. Sometimes you got to go in your job in the bathroom when your boss just gave you on your nerves. I'm a little, I'm going to give you 30 seconds because we got to get to the park. But I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now to shake everything loose that's been trying to bind you. Do it. Y'all feel that? That's the earth shaking up under you. I'm telling you right now, things are falling. Shake. shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Quake, quake, quake. Quake the devil off. Hey, young people, the old people too tired to get free. Let's get them free. Come on. Come on. Stephanie, stand up. You've done good so far. Take your glasses off. I heard the Holy Ghost speaking to me, sweetheart. Would you stretch your hands this way? Because what God's about to put on her, he's about to put on you if you pray for her. I see something that happened over five years ago that every once in a while, it comes back to your memory. And you haven't been able to move from it. But God told me to tell you, honey, this is going to be abnormal for you. This ain't what you like to do, but I'm just trusting you. God said, if you shake your feet, he's going to shake it off of you. 
God said that if you will move your feet and you begin to quake the earth, the earth that's been trying to bind you is about to get off of you. I dare somebody in here that's looking for freedom. Turn your feet loose. You're about to shake, shake it up. I said, turn your feet loose. You're about to shake. Everyone's standing. Oh, everyone's already standing. Sorry. What's that bass? Before you move, everybody needs to shake something. It's in this moment right here. Whatever's in your past, shake it. Whatever's held you back, shake it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, shake it right now. I'm telling you, shake it. I'm telling you, shake it. Shake it. Whatever's held you back, whatever's held you bound, shake it off right now. Come on, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Come on, shake it off. The hell you've been through, shake it off. The bitterness, shake it off. The unforgiveness, shake it off. The pain, shake it off. Come on, shake it off. The affair, the affair that almost caused you to crumble. Quit living under condemnation and shake it off. Shake it off. Oh, oh God, shake it off. Come on, shake it off. What you've been under, shake it off. The weight you've been under, the weight you've been under, shake it off. Oh, the weight, shake it off. Shake it. Shake it off. Come on, before we move, you got to get free. Before we get the Holy Ghost refreshing, you got to get free. Before you get renewed, you got to shake some stuff. You can't go into this room with the old mindset. You can't go into this room with what you, how you acted in the old room. Oh. Some of you have trapped yourself and the statement of that's just who I am. Shake that off right now. That's not who you are. That's not how God created you. That's how man made you. But today you're gonna shake off what you thought you supposed to be. Come on, shake real hard. He's breaking it off of you now. Never spoke in tongues. Okay, okay. Here it is. They went to, say this, just make sure you're locked in. Say this, I'm moving from that room to this room, which is a room of manifestation. We're going to try it again, and I want you to give the proper response. Throw your hands up and say, I'm moving. I, I, I said, say it, my fault, scream it, shout it. Say, I'm moving from that room to this room, which is a room of manifestation. Woo. Ah, God, you feel that? I said, do you feel that? I think we need to do that again. Throw your hands up, say, I'm moving from that room to this room, which is a room of manifestation. If you believe it, give God praise right now. Okay. 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 Here it is. Here it is. The upper room, that room was a room of prayer, which, is, was, which was a room of death. Death is only allowed in the presence of prayer. Death is only allowed. That's our crucifixion. Crucifixion. Dying daily. Pray without, which means die all the time. Die all the time. Because guess what? 
Nothing affects a dead man or a dead woman. Some of y'all better get ready. What's been ticking you off won't be able to tick you off no more because you died today. What's been hurting your feelings not going to hurt your feelings anymore because you died today. Your insecurity that you've been throwing up on people, you're not going to be able to do that no more because you died today. I need all the dead people to make some dead loud noise right now. Jesus tells us to go to the room of death. Pray until you endow with power. I, w- I want to echo what our pastor said. Throw your hands up. You ain't going to like it. It's coming anyway. Throw your hands up. Get ready. You're about to get filled with that empowering spirit. It's called the Holy Ghost. Some of you, keep them hands lifted. I know you want to put them down. No, keep them lifted. Some of you for the first time. Many of you for the first time. Many of you, that's like me. We're about to get a refreshing in here. And you're going to move from people doing stuff for you to you doing stuff for people. And then God's going to do it for you. So when you die, like Jesus... That's why he sent you there. He wanted you to see the power of Gethsemane where your will dies. Because the moment that your will dies, it's the beginning of his will in your life. And can I just tell you one thing what his will is? You're about to live the abundant life. I said it last night, the best life isn't in the Bible, but you're about to live a life that's exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask, imagine, or think. If you're ready for that season of manifestation, I dare you to act like, it is, like it's here right now. And then after he died, he said, it is finished. Everything you've been going through has come to an end today. I feel bad for those that didn't come and those that ain't watching online. They're going to be like, man, something's different about you. Yeah, it was finished. And then the Bible says he gave up the ghost. You know what you've been doing in here? You've been giving up all the stuff you've been loving and hanging on to. Because when you give it up, he takes it. Here's where we shout because it's never coming back. And once it never comes back, uh uh-oh, then the Bible says this. Then the Bible says that the earth began to quake and the rocks began to split. Go ahead and shake what's been trying to shake you. Shake it off. Shake it off. And then here it is. Here it is. And then here it is. Then the Bible says, then the Bible says, and the graves refreshing of the Lord was open. The glory of the Lord, throw your hands up, is open. The power of the Holy One is open. Watch this. He tore the veil. How y'all let me forget that? From top to bottom, which gave you access. That what's about to happen in this room, no man, including yourself, will be able to get the glory. The graves were opening. Somebody shout, God, I'm ready for the opening. As the spirit was moving over the waters, spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. And after the graves opened, It says, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. I come to tell you, your sleeping days are over. That makes a lot of people mad because you love sleep. No, you don't supposed to love sleep. You're supposed to use sleep. Here it is. The spirits now. If you have never spoken tongues and you want the Holy Ghost and you want the Holy Ghost come right now come on come on you have never spoken watch this in your true I only want elders I only want elders and ordained ministers under Destiny Fellowship to come Come I only want elders Ordained elders and only ordained ministers to come and help me. If you've never spoken to us, come. 
Listen to me. Speaking in tongues isn't a secondary language. It's actually your first dialect. We're not going to overcomplicate it. No, we're not. We're not going to overcomplicate it. I love what Bishop said. It's a gift. It's a gift. And some of you, he said, you've been going to the store waiting to get a tongue. Some of you literally expect God to come and grab your tongue and move it. Guess what? Faith without works is dead. So you, you just receive. So you just receive. So you just receive, receive. now. Receive now. You didn't realize it. When you left your seat, guess receive what? Receive now. You already got it. Receive now the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those of you that's in your seat, those of you that's in your seat that you've been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, receive now the refreshing wind. Receive now those of you that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, those of you that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, it. It. and it's been a long time. You got it. Come on, put receive. Oh, Come on, it. receive Come the on. fresh wind of God. That's it. Just put volume to it so that you can hear it. That's put it. volume to it. Come you on, open up your it. mouth. Ta -ta 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 you Come on, every person in this room, that's receive it. the fresh wind it. of God. God. Ah, that's you it, Robert. Jesus, you got it. Just put volume to it. I hope you hear your husband, Brittany, because he's coming home full of the Holy Ghost.
just I just heard the whole, actually what I what I heard if I'm honest this is going to be weird to some of you but it's okay I heard the prayers of some of you that's been praying saying God I want it like I used to have it I heard it God I want to feel those hot tears burn my face again if you're not at the altar and you're in your seat, hey, 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 hey. get out of your seat. Come on, receive. I heard the Lord say he's not going to give it to you like you used to have it. Come on, receive. He's going to give it to you in a greater measure. If that's you, come on up here now. And open your mouth and say, fire and away. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. Pray, young people.
Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, somebody shout, I made it to Pentecost. I didn't say say it, I said shout it. I made it to Pentecost. I made it to Pentecost. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, I want to tell somebody, get ready. Sudden waves of glory is about to sweep over you and in your house. Wave after wave. Some of you are going to be vacuuming your floor. Wave after wave. And 30 minutes later, you're going to be picking yourself off the floor. Listen to me. Some of you are going to be driving to work. And the glory is going to come in there wave so strong, you have to pull wave. your car over, call your boss and say, I'm going to be a wave few minutes late. And the Lord is going to speak to you. Sudden, suddenly, a sound came from heaven as a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Watch this. And they appeared unto them clothed in tongues. Now watch this. I'm just telling you. Get ready. Some people are about to watch you burn. It ain't going to be spiritual. Some of us are about to be clothed with literal fire. People going to say, I see fire in your eyes. People will come sit on your couch and they going to say, I don't understand. Why am I burning? It's literally about to sit on you. Now watch this. And then a couple of verses later, Peter preached his first message, Bishop. Now here's what's crazy. That's the same Peter that a few days ago denied Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which says to me that even your premeditated sin won't stop God from using you. They didn't hear what I said. Some of you have been plotting your sin. Uh huh. And you are about to be frustrated because your plot's not going to stop God's purpose. Jesus, your plot's not going to stop the promise of God. And he preached his first message and 3,000 people got saved. We want to pray for the people that's been running from your calling. You know who you are. Throw your hands up as high as you can. You know. Come on. Come on. There's a fresh wave coming. Come on. Throw those hands up. Those that's been running from it. Come on. Receive you. Come on, receive a fresh, a fresh baptism. May the Lord renew your vision. May the Lord renew your passion. May the Lord renew the call. Come on. Come on, a fresh wave coming. Oh, I feel a fresh wave coming. A fresh wave coming. Wave is coming home. <laughs> Come on, a fresh wave is coming. A fresh anointing is here.
After today, this is your declaration. Miracles, signs, and wonders are following me. Miracles, signs, and wonders are following me. Miracles, signs, and wonders are following me. Switch that mic and sing it. Switch the mic and sing it. Because you're about to be bold. You're not going to hide no more. Go to that pulpit and sing it. Get that hand out there and go. You're going to have to learn to walk in it, honey. That's how I feel every day. But you got to learn how to walk in it. That's why I told these armor bearers, y'all better get some running shoes to be able to keep up. Because I feel a new wave on me. I feel a fire on me. I'm telling y'all, y'all better help me. We're going to have them falling out every which way. You're going to walk in it after today, buddy. You're going to walk in it after today. You ain't going to be scared to walk in it after today. You ain't going to be scared to walk in it. You're about to walk in your daddy's authority. You're about to walk in your mama's boldness. Alicia Williamson, where are you? Where's Father, Alicia Williamson? We pray right now for Bishop Tucker. We pray, God, that the glory, this new glory, he will be able to operate in it as if he's been operating in it before. Lord, let his hands feel like fire. Let his feet be like Heinz feet. Let him jump from one mountain to the next mountain. Let him go from the mountain to conquer what it is in the valley, then to come back up to see you and talk to you. Lord, this is a wonderful mind. Lord, increase it. Strengthen it. Touch this physical body. Keep his back. Keep his shoulders. Keep his hips. Keep his eyes. Keep his voice. Send him around the world for your glory. One more time, lift up those holy hands. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Be empowered, be endued with power. Whew. I see me saying that in I see me saying that in Africa this year and watching them fall out as soon as we open our mouth. Some people we're not even gonna lay hands on, we open our mouth. Receive the power. God. People preach good sermons. Help me not just to preach a good sermon. Help us to walk in power. That the weight of your glory would rest upon our words. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That when we speak, prodigals come running. That when we speak, cancer falls off. That when we speak, marriages are healed. Miracle signs and wonders. Come on, thank Him right now for the glory. Come on, thank Him right now for the glory that's coming to your house. and 
signs and wonders are following miracles, signs. On the way back to your seat, tell us somebody, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Diamond, I heard tongues coming out of you. I heard tongues coming out of you. I heard tongues coming out of you. It was subtle, but I heard it. Tomorrow, same thing. You get right back in the place of posture of prayer and let tongues come. Robert, Landon, I heard tongues coming from your mouth. Woo, I heard it. I heard it. I haven't shared this publicly. I've only told, actually, I've only told my wife. I've only told my wife. But as me and Joshua was in Tennessee, I was in prayer. I don't even, I didn't share with Joshua. I don't believe. But I feel like publicly I want to confess it to you because I believe the same thing's about to happen for you. Prophet, I believe the same thing's about to happen to you. Angie, I believe the same thing's about to happen to you. I was seated and I was in prayer. I was, it was there an altar call and I was just praying. And the bright lights were so bright, I literally opened my eyes to find out what was going on because you ever had your eyes closed but you can feel the light? The light was so bright. The light was so bright, I thought something had happened or a light had switched. And I opened my eyes and the light was not there. I don't share things like this publicly because a lot of times I don't want to give room for nobody to doubt what God did in my life. Some, some of y'all need to learn to keep your dreams to yourself. The Bible says it this way, don't cast your pearls before swine. I'd say it this way, don't cast your dreams before wolves. It's funny that we always say it a wolf in sheep's clothing and make that like it's the man of God y'all 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 he's a wolf in sheep's clothing well that means he's a parishioner if you want the if you want the preacher to be a wolf then you have to say the shepherd's in wolf clothing that's not what the Bible says it said the sheep is in wolf's clothing but y'all have twisted the word to tear down a man or woman of God he's talking about sheep not shepherds just saying some of y'all are goats. I got it. I got oil on me. I'm sorry. I opened my eyes. The light was gone, Pastor Ricky. I closed the eye. I closed my eyes, and the light was so bright, and I began to see angels on my shoulders. And out of my mouth came a sword. And anything that rose in front of my family, Pastor Rachel, anything that rose in front of my family my words begin to chop it down the angel of the Lord empowered me and he went before me and everything began to be slaughtered in front of us I'm telling you there's a new anointing on this house there's a new grace on my life you might want to be careful but that same Holy Ghost is now on you and your words are going to be like a mighty sword. And when you open your mouth, you will slay the demons. Praise the Lord, everybody.